Should you play Diablo 4? Is it worth the money? Is it worth the time investment? I'm sure you've already seen a video on the reviews of the game from the elitist perspective coming from Path of Exile, who has played Diablo 2, Diablo 3, Diablo Immortals every second of every day. But I am not those peoples. The last time I played a Diablo game was back in 2010. So is this game fun? And should you play it from a new player's perspective? Welcome back guys, I am Horcrux for Valiant Toast and if you want to be up to date on anything D4 related when it comes to builds, exploit, news, hit the like and sub button because we are going to cover everything on this channel. Let me preface this by saying this is for a closed beta with a level cap of 25 so there's still a lot of content and a lot of systems that have not been unveiled to us and we're going to leave technicalities out of the rating of this game and my overall review of it because this is an open beta this is so the devs that they can get all the bugs out of the system I think every ARPG or MMO or whatever genre this game is when they have a beta it's always an absolute shit show okay so with the queue times and the disconnects and the constant lagging and freezing and rubber banding, we're gonna leave all that out and just assume it's gonna be fixed when the game launches. So the first point I wanna bring up is the cinematics and the voice acting. Blizzard, or Diablo in particular, has been known for really good cinematics and Diablo 4 is no exception. It absolutely delivered. I haven't seen a Diablo trailer or cinematic in like years, literally a decade. The last time I played Diablo was Diablo 2 and that was back in 2010. So I do have a little bit of knowledge of Diablo, right? With all the hell bovine farming and Tristram. So I know a little bit of the lore, you know, Mephisto, Bell, Diablo, like I get it, okay? So one thing I will point out is the graphics. The graphics when you're playing the game is actually phenomenal. It's really, really good. You can't really notice that because Twitch has an 8,000 bit rate cap at which you can stream it. So the quality has to be lessened. But if you catch people who stream on YouTube, like myself, I have a 20,000 bit rate cap and you can really notice the quality of difference. I had quite a few people in my chat saying the quality looks terrible. Well, that's just because Twitch has that limitation. When you're actually playing the game yourself, it's a totally different world. So the first point I want to bring up is the skill trees. Now I played a sorcerer and also a barbarian. I played the cheesiest class I could, which is a sorceress. And it was really hard for me to put it down with all of the broken builds that you could run. And it was, they was very, very easily attainable. And then the drop rate for legendaries is really high. I think the drop rate for the legendaries and yellows are really high because this is the beta and they want people to experiment with their builds and the potential, what they can look for going to in game. There's literally a play style for everyone. When you take a look at the trees, there's so many branches and so many different ways you can go with the aspects on your legendary gear. We'll cover that in a moment. There literally is a build for everyone. And my favorite build of all time was the plus nine Hydra Sorcerer build to where you literally just put your Hydras down and you go AFK and they kill everything. You just walk around, you're crackling lightnings, just killing all the ads. You put your hydras down, you run in a circle. Hell, you don't even have to move. You can just sit and spam E the whole time, which is what I had the hydras bound to, and it just kills everything. Like, there's no cooldown on the hydras. The hydras don't cost anything. This is inevitably going to be nerfed, maybe during the next open beta or hopefully when the game goes live. Um, I actually secretly hope it doesn't get nerfed because I had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was super brain dead, but you know what? Sometimes simplicity is great. Unlike Path of Exile, which to the new player is, is there's a brick wall. You cannot play a Path of Exile as a new player. There's just so many mechanics that you just need to know and systems. It is absolutely overwhelming. And that's why I kind of like playing Diablo because the systems are very palatable. They're easy to understand. There is a little bit of complexities to them, you know, for you min maxers out there. But as a new player, I had a lot of fun. It was very easy to understand. With that being said, I'm going to critique my own criticism. Yes, while simplistics are very good for the game, it's not very good for the longevity of the game. I hope at some point Diablo does deliver some sort of much more complex system. I don't think six spells or six abilities is enough to keep me engaged for the longevity of the game. So hopefully at some point there will be some new system at which maybe you can bar swap to where you have access to a whole nother plethora of spells. Who knows? The ball's in your court on that one, Blizzard. Let's see what you cook up. And another build I really love to play, which is AFK Brain Dead, was the Thorns build for the Barbarian. You literally just stand there and let the ads hit you, and then uh, they just die. That may not seem like fun to you, but guys, I'm not going to lie. I like standing in the middle of a public event, passively gaining XP, killing everything, getting drops, while I'm scrolling through my YouTube shorts on my phone and on my third monitor and Discord and literally doing nothing while I'm getting power leveled. So the combat in Diablo 4 is actually on point. It felt very visceral. It's a lot 
lot like Lost Ark, you know, the isometric top-down view, and I had a lot of fun playing it. Everything was very simple. There's only six spells you can cast. The good thing about it is it's crossplay too. So if you are on PC and your homies are still back in the Stone Age and they're still on console, you can play with them as well. The combat was very engaging when you get to some of the bosses. Some of them, I actually died a couple times in the veteran mode. You know, this is a hell mode, or and thank God I didn't play the, the hard mode, you know, where you die and you, you your character just dies, right? Because there is an NPC uh, full of surprises, actually, the Butcher. The Butcher actually fisted me with no Vaseline, no lube, and it was a positive gaming experience. <laughs> oh no, bro, we're gonna die at this motherfucker. This is no way to get away from me, bro. Oh my God. He's too fast. If you guys have already played or ran into the butcher, the TLDR, the butcher is just a big, fat, beefy, speedy boy. He comes and fists you and there's nothing you can do about it unless you're already built to engage the butcher. That was a wake up call. I actually found the death to be really funny. So I'm glad Diablo added that It's kind of like a throwback to Diablo 2 because I think the first boss in act one, don't, don't quote me on this. I think it's the butcher. If I remember correctly, it's been 12 years. Give me a break. So when it comes to the crafting, the crafting was pretty straightforward. So you have your socketing, you have your upgrade materials, you have your stats, you have your aspects. So aspects are like special effects that you can add to your gear to further increase your build diversity. I think that was very well explained. If a smooth lizard brain like myself can pick it up in a matter of 15, 20 so minutes, everyone can. One vendor I wish they emphasized was the purveyor of curiosities. That's how you're going to get all of your really good gear. You know, like from Destiny, you can focus your gear, you know, like an RNG chance to get some really good legendary items. And that's how I was able to get the plus nine Hydra brain dead build to where you literally just, just, just kill everything. AFK, it was fun. It was great. A lot of people don't like that, but I had a fucking blast. Let me just go ahead and throw this in there. Guys, I am not a PvEer. I am not a big grinder. I absolutely hate it. I'm only into the competitive scene. Like in ESO, all I do is PvP content, Apex, Fortnite, whatever. And for me to actually have fun grinding PvE, killing mobs for, to keep me entertained is saying a lot. Maybe that's because I played a sorcerer over 100 hours during the beta test and that was the most OP shit I've ever ran. It was great. You know, maybe I'm a little biased, but yeah, it still kept me very much engaged. So surprisingly enough, I felt that Diablo 4 felt like more of an MMO than an ARPG, especially around the world boss. So it is open world, it is pretty vast. There's a lot of areas to explore and we don't have access to mounts currently. So it was kind of tedious going from place to place on foot, but it was still a really good experience. And running into random people at public events was overall pretty positive, except I remember I was leveling, I was level 22. And this some douchebag brings a level 30 rare mob over to me and just like one shot to me. I mean, that, that sucks, but it is what it is. Now, when it comes to farming to get your best gear, there were a lot of legendary loot farms that you could very easily do. Hopefully a lot of this is a patch, but the open beta kind of gives you access to see, you know, how you're going to min max going into the open beta and how to best maximize your time. Because quite frankly, guys, we don't have a lot of time. A lot of us as families, we're dads, we only have one, two hours a day to get anything done. So if you want guides on how to maximize your time, I'm going to have everything here on the channel. All right, so that covers most of the pros. What didn't I like about Diablo 4? Well, there was a lot of copy and paste content I did not necessarily agree with. So in the first zone alone, there are 23 dungeons. Only 22 of them are technically accessible. And guys, a lot of them just was just pretty much copy and paste. Same mechanics, same environment, except you just go a different way. It's boss door, go get stone, go get stone, open door, nuke boss, 10 seconds. To be fair, The Elder Scrolls Online, which is the MMO that I am maining currently, which I have been for the past nine years, please go check out some of my contents if you guys are interested. In Blizzard's defense, each zone you have in The Elder Scrolls Online only has one dungeon. This had 23, so I understand the need for a lot of copy and pasting content. To me, there was really only five, maybe six different types of dungeons. There was Icy Boys, there was Flamey Boys, there was one outside, there was a Crypt one, there was a library theme, and there was kind of like a, like a dungeon, like torture theme. That's all I can really think of off the top of my head. Now, what I didn't like is like, the dungeons are just kind of squiggly and you eventually get to the door you need to, and you gotta do the exact same mechanic over and over and over. I wish you could just go in and just nuke the boss and get out. Maybe you could put in something like in the Elder Scrolls Online, they have like a hard mode to the dungeon. 
So maybe if you want to activate the hard mode to the dungeon, you can go off and do all of the uh, the extra optional things you need to do to, to make a hard mode with bare loot. I don't know, but doing that 22, you know, 23 times, it was, was not that great. Of course, in hindsight, this is the only area we had to explore. Naturally, when you get to level 25 or wherever, you're just going to progress to the next area. So maybe that we were stuck in this area so long and we did all the dungeons, maybe I just realized that everything was pretty much copy and pasted from the same assets. But I think in the big scheme of the things, you're not going to spend a lot of times in this area. And the whole point of the dungeons was to get these aspects, which you could imprint on your gear to make some very unique builds. So from that standpoint, I'm going to get Blizzard a pass on that one. But everything else was it, it was pretty on point and very well polished. Other than, you know, again, the disconnects and the rubber bands and the two hour queue times. Other than that, I think it was a pretty solid game. And one more snafu that I had is that we did not get to experience any PvP content. I understand this is a closed beta, maybe the next open beta will introduce PvP, maybe not. Maybe we'll have to wait until the release of the actual game, which is what I think most people are leaning toward anyway. So I can't really talk about the PvP until it happens. Um, we are definitely going to be doing a deep dive on the PvP because again, this is a PvP oriented channel, so it's definitely going to be a big hit or miss. Also, the transmog system is pretty cool. Now, you can't actually transmog all of the gear that you find. There's like a dark blade that kind of looks like the dark saber from the Mandalorian, which looked really cool, but you can't transmog it. But that's like a little niche thing I'm kind of worried about. Maybe later on in the game, there will be some other variant of the weapon you can actually transmog. But guys, you don't look very good on the sorcerer. I'm not going to lie to you. So the transmog system, I'm glad it's there in the game. And who knows, it might actually be pretty good in the future. So should you invest your time and money into Diablo 4? Um, I think overall, yes. It's it's a pretty well polished quote unquote game so far. There's a little bit for everyone. The systems aren't too complex yet and the combat feels very visceral. It feels very engaging. Some of the fetch quests are kind of mind numbing and again some of the dungeons are kind of copy and possum. But again going into the open beta into the actual base game when it drops I'm sure you're not going to notice any bit of that. And once more, I am a PvP person. All I care is about PvP. The fact that the PvE is this good and this engaging for me definitely two thumbs up yes i have an opinion on this game as a new player it's really fun but you never really know until you try it yourself and the good thing about today's age is if you buy the game and you don't like it for whatever reason you can just return it it's not that big a deal if i was to give this rating i would definitely give it like a 9 out of 10 as a new player now i'm sure the elitists will have more of a stickler point of view on it. i'm sure there's a lot of niche scenarios and snafus that i'm not touching on but just jumping into the diablo franchise picking up the game it was very easy to play very fun i felt powerful it was engaging i had a whole hell of a lot of fun and you guys will too well that about does it for me guys again this has been horcrux do not forget to like and sub if you appreciate the content and you want more diablo 4 news going forward if you played the beta let me know down in the comments what you thought and what class did you main a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat if you want to be a part of the community everything is down in the description below this has been horcrux i'm signing out peace